Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about tuple, tuple method, and some other operations that we can perform with the tuple. So let's get into this. Okay, so what is tuple? So tuple is one of the data types in Python, similar to list, and it's a sequence so you can store different data types and different elements inside the tuple, and it utilizes the same slicing and indexing rules that we have learned in the string and in the list videos, and the only difference between the list and tuple is the mutability. So the list is mutable and tuple is immutable, which I'm going to talk more about it in later portion of the video. Okay, so now let's try to create a tuple variable. There are three different ways that we can create a tuple. So the first way is to create a variable, tuple1, and set it equal to a parenthesis. And if we check the type of the tuple1 and run it, you will see the class tuple here. And then the second way is to call the tuple class directly. So tuple1 equal to tuple class and instantiate it by putting the parenthesis here. And if we run the print statement one more time and run it, you reach the class tuple here as well. And the last method that I'm going to talk about actually requires more than one element inside the tuple. So let me show you that. So tuple one and set it equal to two comma four point five comma Danny. So in this case, we have a multiple different elements separated by the comma and all the elements were set to one variable tuple one. So if we run the print statement one more time and run it, you reach the class tuple here as well. So all three of the methods that I'm showing you works, but the last method just requires more than one element separated by the comma, and we actually do need to set that equal to one tuple variable. And there is one thing that we have to keep in mind when creating a tuple with a single element. So let me first comment this out, and let me cut this and paste it down here. So let's say that I'm trying to create a tuple uh, with just one element, like four. And then if I try to check the type of the tuple one here, tuple 1 and if I were to print this out you reach the class integer instead of class tuple and the reason why this is happening is because the parenthesis here is actually working as the parenthesis that we have learned in the order of operations so in order for us to actually make this single element as a tuple we have to actually put the comma after the element and if we were to print this out one more time then you reach the class tuple here so this is a thing that we have to be careful of so if you have a single element don't forget to put the comma after the element Okay, so now let's talk about the tuple unpacking. So I have a tuple one variable created here with a five different elements and the tuple unpacking allows us to map each of the element in the tuple one into a five different variables. So I'm gonna first create a five different variables here. So let me just copy and paste what I have here to here. So as you can see, we have an element one to element five set up here and I'm gonna actually set this equal to let me uh, apply the line break here I'm gonna set this equal to tuple 1 so what I'm doing here is that I first create a five different variables element 1 to element 5 and I set that equal to tuple 1 and the Python will actually perform tuple unpacking in this case meaning that the five different elements will map to element 1 element 2 element 3 and so on based on their index so if I were to print element 1 to element 5 then you will actually be able to see all the values just starting from 1 Danny to the end of the element. So let me just paste it here. And if I run this, you will see all the elements starting from the beginning of the tuple 1, Danny, 1 1.2, and then the list, and then the tuple here. Uh, because we are actually printing out in order element 1 to element 5. And one thing to remember about this tuple unpacking is that the number of elements that you have in the tuple always have to match the number of variables that you have created. So for example, if I just delete the element 5 here and then try to set that equal to tuple 1, and if I just try to print this out one more time, then the Python will throw a value error saying that too many values to unpack. And this is an expected behavior because the tuple unpacking only works when the number of elements actually match the number of variables that you have created. Okay, so now let's try to talk about how we can access each of the elements that we have in the tuple one. We can use the same slicing and indexing rules that we have talked about in the list video. So let me show you some example. So we can do print, tuple one square bracket and let's say that I want to access this first element then I can just put the positive index of zero and print this out you will see one here and also we can print the last element here using the negative index so print tuple one square bracket negative one and print this out you will see uh, the tuple that we see here and you can also access the element within the nested tuple that we have here. So let's say that I want to access this four here. Then the first step that we have to do is to point to this tuple. And then we're going to try to point to the first index within this tuple. So I'm going to do a print 
tuple 1 square bracket 3. So we are pointing to this tuple here and then we're going to point to this and another square bracket 0. And if we print this out, you will see a 4 here. And we can also use the slicing. So we can do print tuple 1 square bracket start index as 0. So we want to start from the beginning. And then we want to stop right here. Then I can say that the stop index is 2. And since the stop index is exclusive, it's only going to print 1 and Danny. So if I print this out, you will see 1 and Danny here. And we can also try to print out the 1 and Danny using the negative index. So I can do print tuple 1 square bracket. We're gonna start from negative 4 and then we're gonna stop at negative 2 and if I run this one more time you will see the same result here. Okay so now let's move on to how we can update each of the element that we have in the tuple 1. The long answer short we cannot update any of the elements in the tuple because tuple is immutable. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video list is immutable but tuple is immutable. So let me show you an example of the list first. So I'm going to create a list variable list1 and set that equal to 1 to 3 and let's say that I'm trying to update this value here 1 then we can do list1 square bracket index of 0 and I want to set that equal to a totally different value so I'm going to say beginning and if I were to print the list1 here and run it you will see a beginning 2 3 so as you can see the element that we have specified using the index was updated because we actually have set it to a different value let's uh let's try to do the same thing using the tuple that we have here so I'm going to cut this and paste it down here and let's say that I want to update the first element here then we can do tuple 1 square bracket 0 and then I want to set that equal to beginning as well and then print tuple 1 and if I were to run this you will see a type error saying that the tuple object does not support the item assignment and this is expected because tuple is immutable meaning that you cannot change any of the elements that you have in the tuple 1. Then you might ask can we replace this list within this tuple since list is a mutable data type? The answer is no because the list here is just one of the elements within the tuple and all the elements within the outer layer of the tuple is not mutable. However, you can update the elements within this list here because these elements are actually bound to a list not to a tuple. So let me show you that here. So I'm going to change this index to 2 and then let's also try to access the first index here. So I'm going to say index of 0 and I want to change that to beginning. And if I run this one more time you will see a change value here beginning. So what this means here is that if you have a mutable data type within the tuple, then you can access each of the element within that mutable data type and you can update it. However, this list itself as a whole cannot be updated because this is one of the element within the tuple. So we just talked about tuple's immutability and that immutability applies to element deletion as well. Meaning that we cannot delete any of the element that we have in the tuple 1 because of its uh, immutability. The only deletion that we can perform in the tuple is to delete this tuple's variable as a whole. But let me still show you an example of trying to delete the single element. So we can do del tuple 1 square bracket index of 0 and then we can do a print tuple 1 and if I run this you will see an error saying that the tuple object doesn't support the item deletion meaning that all the elements in the tuple is just not mutable so let's just try to delete this uh, tuple 1 variable as a whole so we can just do del tuple 1 and if I try to print the tuple 1 out you will see another error like the name error saying the name tuple 1 is not defined and this is expected because before we actually print the tuple 1 variable in this line the tuple 1 variable was deleted at the line 55 so the print statement is complaining saying that they could not find the tuple 1 variable because it was deleted at the line above here so now let's try to use the plus and multiply operators in tuple so let me first comment this and let me create another tuple here so tuple 2 and set that equal to 1 2 3 and if I use the plus operator in between tuple 1 and tuple 2, between tuple 1 plus tuple 2. So what this will do is that it's going to combine tuple 1 and tuple 2. So if I print this out, you will see all the elements from tuple 1 and the elements from the tuple 2 within a single tuple. And we can also use the multiply operator. So we can do print tuple 2 times 3. And this will replicate tuple 2 3 times within a single tuple. So if I run this, you will see one, two, three, three times here. 
Okay, so finally, let's talk about some of the built-in methods for tuple class. Unlike the methods from the list class, tuple only have two built-in methods that we can use, excluding the special method. And as you may have guessed, this is because tuple is immutable and there are a limited number of tests that you can perform since you cannot enter any of the elements within the tuple data type. So the first method that we're going to talk about is the count method. And as the name says it, it counts the number of elements found in the tuple here. So we can do a uh, count equal tuple1.count and let's say that I want to count the uh, element A and if I print the count and print this out you will see 4 here because there are 4 A's found in the tuple 1 and you can also try to put something that does not exist in this tuple and it's going to return 0 because 5 was not found in the tuple 1 and then the next method that we're going to talk about is the index method so the same thing, we can set the index variable and tuple1.index and let's say that I want to find the index of the element A here and if I print the index and run it, you will see 0 here because the index method returns the first occurrence of the A found in the tuple1 and you can also specify the start and stop position for the index method so let's say that I want to find the index of A from here to here then I can set the start position as 4 and then I can set the stop position as 8 which is here and if I run this one more time and now you will see index of 7 here because we specified our start and stop position from here to here so that this A has the index of 7 and so that it returns the index of 7 here. Okay guys, that's it for this video. We talked about the tuple and its method as well as the difference between list and tuple. For next video, we're going to talk about dictionary data type and various different methods which is going to be pretty important. So please keep it tuned. And if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos.